What's up guys, it's Walden Light from Walden Light Baseball on Instagram and the founder of Build Baseball. With the current circumstances, we as baseball players need to find a way to improve our skills and also train at home. And I want to start making uh, videos about what you do at home, like drills and also uh, lifting workouts that you could do to improve yourself during this time. Now, uh, here's an infield routine and I like to start off with short hops kneeling just to isolate the hands and start off with short hops and really just cut through the ball uh, as you can tell I have my tripod case right in front of me you could have any line whatever works for you but that just uh, helps keep your posture and keep you over the ball and in that fielding posture instead of back on your heels to keep your hand in front of that you need to be leaning forward and there's a few hops that we address throughout these drills but I like to do uh, double the amount of short hops that compared to the other types of hops because that's the hop that you're going to want to get in a game because it's the easiest most predictable one if you have a ball bounce very far in front of you it has more time to move on you and that's why short hop is better now moving into the next hop which is an in, in between hop it's similar to the long hop uh, you cannot cut through it though because it bounces too far in front of you so you just want to work not necessarily back but from the ground up you want to still keep it in front of your chin you want to keep your chin behind the ball track it in with your peripherals bury your chin the next one is the top shelf hop this is where you would have to turn your hand so good to start with your uh, hand on the ground and then turn it to receive the ball because it's a simulating bad hop in a game like I said you go back to the short hops at the end after you do the other two hops because that is the hop that you want to get in the game so it's good to hammer into your brain how to work through a ball like that. It's also better to feel the ball aggressively. You just wouldn't necessarily do that on a top shelf or in between hop because that would you would not have soft hands and just receive it. Next is the forehand which um, you just also you just uh, move your body a little bit. You do not need the line there anymore. You do the short hop, uh, the in between hop and you uh, it's just the same fundamentals apply when to funnel and when to cut through. Keep your chin behind the ball. Easier to work through. Um, you do not need that line there anymore, like I said, because you just need to keep your chin behind the ball, and that will uh, help you keep that posture anyway. So no need to have that line. Uh, you could do this off wall. You could have someone toss it to you. Uh, I feel like it's easier to toss it off a wall. You can do whatever you want, though. Back to the short hops, like I said. Um, yeah, pretty much. And then just want to work through it present your palm on um, backhand you want to expose your palm like I just said work straight through it um, really you just want pretty much your shoulder and your elbow to move keep your body low in that posture uh, then we move into the in between half similar to what I just said just that pendulum movement just the elbow when the ball is coming back you would want to push through a uh, short hop and then come back but as if you were curling with that arm but when this ball comes in, you want to receive it with your glove hand and then bring it back to your chest for it to be transferred. And that's what you want to do for these drills. Once you receive the ball, you want to bring it to your chest for the transfer. And I was getting a lot of weird hops off this wall. The time is a brick wall. But really, that's how that's more um, game-like, so it's pretty helpful that way. Now the top shelf hop, you want to stay low and you want to keep your chin behind the ball. Instead of coming up with your body, you receive the ball. Just move your hand up, keep your chin behind the ball. You want to maintain that posture so that you can stay in the ground and be able to make a harder throw for when you have to feel in and throw right after. Now, uh, back to the short hops. Like I said, you do all the three hops, but double for short hop at the beginning and end. Then after that, you want to move into standing. So straight on again, it's all three hops. It's the same fundamentals apply. Chin behind the place where you receive the ball. Bury the chin. Uh, I didn't talk about that yet. Actually, you want to bury your chin just to track the ball in with your glove. For a in-between hop, it's easier to see the ball and also top shelf, so not necessarily as important as if you were uh, fielding a short hop. Uh, next, yeah, you just uh, do the same thing. Go back to the short hop afterwards for this, yeah, right there. You can go back to the short hop. And after that, it is a forehand, and it's the same fundamentals, all, all three hops as before. You want to have a little bit more weight on your left side so that you can stay behind the ball, keep your chin behind the place where you receive the ball. Work through on the short hop, 
There we go. Yeah. So just these isolating hand drills so that when you get back on that field and take more game like live reps, you are going to be able to feel the balls better and handle them better, have softer hands. There we go. So those are the main hops. You could do a long hop. It's just the same sort of movement as the in-between hops. So it would just be, it wouldn't necessarily be as important. Now the shallow backhand, this is the same thing as the short hop on the knees. And this is the first of the short hop, like the backhand short hop drills that we will get into standing. So now you're actually, um, you're uh, just lean, staying back, same thing. But now you're uh, staying back on your right side to keep your head behind the ball but after that it is the uh, deep backhand and it's the same fundamentals as the other one but just a different angle of looking out uh, looking out at it so um this would be for a ball hit hard to your right for a backhand but you're not able to get behind it in time to work through it and we'll talk about this a little bit more once we get into the game like live reps that you could do so yeah just working through that short hop uh, doing all the same hops as before and return to straight on I like to do more straight on and with the knees I would do the straight on again at the end that's because in a game you want to get in front of the ball whenever you can to be productive and then also for uh, the more game like reps you want to do the five common footwork drills and I got this from uh, Kai Correa so the first one is straight on you want to work around it uh, you don't need a partner necessarily. I was able to get one, which makes it easier for ball direction. But right here, you can do it with wall, like you see there. Next one is a shallow forehand. You just want to work through, direct momentum to your target. This is for a forehand that's not super hard to get to. You're able to work through. Next one is a deep forehand. It's farther to your left side. And you just let the ball hit, uh, receive. You receive the ball and then let that carry you into your turn. And that's for a ball deep in the hole if you were a shortstop. But or up the middle. And then shallow backhand is the ball you're able to get behind and work through. So a little bit to your right, but not so close to you that you can work around it for a straight on. The next one is a deep backhand. This would be far to your right, where you just receive with the other foot in front and then you replace your feet. You get to that throw. That's my favorite uh, setup for that. Uh, hand eye coordination tennis balls. This is a drill I got from Kai Correa, Friday Fielders. Check that YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, really, it's just. Uh, two, it's just a bunch of balls colored different distinct colors and each one has the same number on it so one ball will be covered with a bunch of ones in one color the next one will be a bunch of twos in a different color things like that the partner tosses it to you you try to say the number and you catch one color with one hand and the other color with the other hand now the play variations you can do this you can add in bounces speeds spins uh, you can have the colors mean go to different bases like I do here you could try to say the numbers is really difficult to do with the spins, but over time it becomes easier. And you can't hear it because I don't have the audio in for this. But uh, I'm trying to shout out the numbers of the what's on the ball as it's coming towards me. And this just really works on your ability to pick up something with your eyes and then adjust your body because of that information. So thank you guys for watching. I'll uh, have more of these videos in the future, so subscribe. Go to buildbaseball.com for more content and follow Walden Light Baseball on Instagram and, w and WL3C Baseball on Twitter. Thank you guys for watching.